In Fault Tactics, there are only two ways to heal your squad, either by using items or by passing time. Unlike its predecessors, you can't use the Pip-Boy to wait, and time only passes quickly while traveling on the world map. Healing this way isn't ideal though, as you can easily take more damage in random encounters than you had in the first place. This same issue applies to radiation and status effects, essentially forcing you to spend a significant portion of your money buying stem packs, doctor bags, rat away, etc. At first glance, this appears to be bad design, but like many aspects of the Fallout series, the developers originally had different plans. Throughout the single player campaign, you gain access to several Brotherhood of Steel bunkers, and each of these locations has various medical officers. In their dialogue, they offer healing, but despite this, these NPCs never restore the player's health and instead only sell equipment. This totally confused me during my first playthrough, and a little research revealed this has confused countless other players since the game's release over 20 years ago. Intriguingly, developer notes suggest the medical officers were intended to have varying levels of skill, and this was going to have an in-game effect. Talented medical officers could heal all damage, radiation, and status effects when you spoke to them, while the less skilled medics were only able to partially heal your squad. For example, the first medical officer the player meets is named Celsius, and in his opening dialogue, he specifically mentions he can heal you, despite the fact he acts only as a vendor. Greetings, warrior. I am Celsius, healer and scribe. You may return to the bunker for healing anytime you wish. I will heal you as long as I have the resources to do so. A note in the Alpha Bunker text file even mentions that Celsius is simply the medic inside the bunker. The player can visit him whenever healing is needed. He will be busy tending to the wounds of the injured soldiers. Celsius is dressed in robes. He is considered one of the elders. He is a master surgeon and a scholar. Celsius has a deep voice and a confident air about him. He never betrays any hint that he is uncertain of his skills. I would picture him as having white graying hair. He might even look a little like the Diablo 2 Necromancer. Celsius will follow the player from Bunker to Bunker until Bunker 03. Once the player has moved to Bunker 02, the other replacement medic, Timothy, will take over. Later in the note, it expands even further, stating Celsius' introduction. Celsius will introduce himself the first time the player talks to him. He will explain that they can return anytime for healing. After talking, the player has a chance to either barter for medicine or exit the conversation. Either way, may allow Celsius to heal the player's party completely. Later in the campaign, Celsius is replaced by Scribe Timothy, who was meant to be one of the worst medical officers. Hi warrior, I'm Timmy, the interim medic. Hey, give me a second to check your injuries. I just dropped all these sterilized needles on the floor, but uh, hey, that's why they have the five minute rule, right? <laughs> I'll just wipe them off with this soiled bandage here. His description reads, Timothy is Celsius' student. He will take over from Celsius once Celsius has moved on. Timothy isn't quite as skilled as Celsius, which is incentive for the player to stick to the current stage. Another note states that Timothy has no text. He quietly tends to the character's wounds. Timothy isn't as experienced as Celsius, and he shouldn't sell any medical supplies. He might not be able to heal to maximum health, or he might not be able to help remove radiation contamination. He will sound like a squeaky voiced teenager who's in over his head. It interestingly mentions that the ability of the current medical officer was intended to make some sections of the campaign easier and others more challenging. It even notes that he wouldn't be able to sell medical supplies. Other merchants only have a small number of healing items for sale, and this would have made the missions where he was present much more difficult. Timothy's floating text reflects his proficiency, and he has lines like, what side is the appendix on, I can't remember, nah, I hate those gloves, I never use them, and whoa, they didn't cover that in my two weeks training. These lines don't have the same impact in game though, considering his medical skill never comes into play. The next medic is Scribe Jeffrey, and he was another low quality medical officer. His description was copy and pasted from Timothy, and he's the only medical officer that has no recorded dialogue. Like Timothy, Jeffrey has lines that reveal how unskilled he is. Like, I've never seen this before. I'm a farmer, not a doctor, damn it. And sorry, it's hard to stitch with that other guy's guts all over my hands. 
The next medical officer is named Highland, and like Celsius, she was skilled at first aid and was going to be able to heal all damage, status effects, and radiation. Greetings, warrior. I'm Highland, part of General Decker's support team and the medical officer in charge here. I was informed that your squad gets top priority, so let's get your vital readings and see what the problem is. Oh, oh I'm sorry. We're pretty busy here lately. In the last 12 hours, I've set 13 broken bones, amputated four limbs, and handled all the patients for daily sick call. Oh, oh, where are my manners? I'm Scribe Highland, but please, just call me Doc. I'm a fixture here, so come by if you're feeling ill. Hello again. It's comforting to see someone who can walk without assistance. I've been reassigned to this bunker due to the heavy combat in the area. The situation here is dire. We've lost many lives to the robot army, and we have many injured. But I was informed that your squad gets top priority. So now, how can I help you? Her description has one of the funniest developer notes I've seen in recent memory. Name, Scribe Highland. Ed, I'm changing some names to ones I'll be able to pronounce to the voice actors. Notes throughout the file then reveal that Highland's original name was Nephra or something, so I can definitely see why this was altered. Her final name is a tip of the hat to Edward Highland, a QA tester on Fault 1 and 2 who would later become the QA project supervisor for tactics. Picking back up at Highland Highland's description now. Highland is the medic inside the bunker. The player can visit her whenever healing is needed. She will be busy tending to the wounds of the injured soldiers. Highland is a thin, pale woman with very pale blonde hair. She wears her hair long, but tied back into a ponytail. She has delicate features and a playful smile. Her expression is sad, and her eyes have dark rings around them from long hours without sleep. She is currently kept very busy with the Brotherhood casualties sustained from war with the Reaver army. Highland is later replaced by the final medical officer, Scribe Blythe. Hello, my name is Blythe. I'm the senior medical officer in charge here. You'll only get top-notch treatment from my staff and I. His description reads, Blythe is Highland's assistant. He will take over from Highland once Highland moves to Bunker 05. Blythe isn't quite as skilled as Highland, which is incentive for the player to stick to the current stage. Blythe isn't as experienced as Highland, but he isn't about to let the player know it. Similar to Timothy and Jeffrey, Blythe wouldn't have been able to heal the player completely or remove radiation. Some NPCs even have lines where they talk shit about his first data ability, saying things like, that Blythe couldn't pull out a splinter. Much of Blythe's recorded dialogue and floating text revolves around his contempt for Highland, and this cut content implies the rivalry stemmed from her being a better doctor. Again, neither can heal though, so this subtext is completely lost. You'll be pleased to know that I, Scribe Blythe, am now the senior medical officer here. Now that Dr. Highland the Hack has been reassigned, you'll receive only top-notch treatment from my staff and I. Personally, I wouldn't let Scribe Highland play midwife to a pregnant Brahmin. <laughs> I don't trust Highland. She's too young. And just how can she have been promoted to a full medical officer so soon, huh? I strongly suspect she may have been giving General Decker one of her patented deep cleaning sponge baths, if you know what I mean. A little nudge, nudge, wink, wink, huh, you know? <laughs> Anyway, she'll screw up soon enough, and we'll see what a hack she really is. In the meanwhile, you have shown your wisdom by coming here to see me instead of her. Again, neither can heal though, so the subtext is completely lost. It's genuinely unfortunate they couldn't implement a healing ability for medical officers, as it would have made the campaign more accessible and much less frustrating. This is a relatively small change that would have been a major quality of life improvement. At the very least, it's too bad they couldn't record new dialogue where these NPCs no longer reference cut content, but say la vie. Healing wasn't going to be limited to just medical officers, though. Most factions, including the Brotherhood, Beast Lords, Reavers, Raiders, and more, have unused sprites for medics, suggesting there were meant to be enemy and allied healers in combat as well. NPCs and tactics have AI settings called Demeanor and Nature, which determine how they react in combat. For example, a given nature will make an NPC more likely to take cover, while a different nature would make them attack, use a healing item, wage 
traps, runaway, etc. There's an unused nature called miscellaneous assist heal that was intended for these NPC medics, and this would have made them heal their teammates. There are also multiple unused references to a repair bot, which was presumably the unique medic robot used by the campaign's main antagonist, the calculator. There's an unused demeanor for them to repair their allies as well. There's no concept art or sprites, sadly, so it's anyone's guess how this cut robot would have appeared visually. The executable file has a note that mentions the phrase, non-repair bot attempting to call assist heal. This implies that wounded enemies were going to call out to medics for help, which could have added an additional layer of combat complexity, encouraging a more reckless playstyle where you desperately needed to kill hostile medics before they forced you into long, drawn-out engagements. In the end, it's unknown if Microforte didn't have time to complete these ideas, or if they were cut deliberately, but I suspect we're looking at yet another casualty of a very rushed development cycle. An expanded medic and medical officer system would have made fault tactics into an even better game. Ultimately though, all of this was left on the cutting room floor.